Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on my channel, I do anti-MLM content. I also have a clothing reselling business on the Poshmark app. So I make a lot of Poshmark and reselling tips and tricks videos as well. Today's video is another MLM top fails and I have some straight up heinous stuff to show you. And I'm giving all the credit to everybody who sent me this stuff. I really have no words for this first thing that we're gonna be watching. I'm not gonna preface it with anything other than she's a Monate rep and that there is a lot of cussing and foul language in this. I know that some people like to know that up front so that you're not watching this without headphones in front of your young kids or something like that. But the first clip is long, it's insanity, and there is a lot of cussing. Also, I have pie. Please don't mind me eating it. I just wanna let you guys know that starting a business from the ground up is, it's challenging, but it's fun as fuck. <clears throat> because you bring on a fuck ton of people that truly care <clears throat> about being more and doing more and helping people more. You bring all these people with you. Do you see when you work for someone, you become very lonely. People say that entrepreneurship is lonely. It's not fucking lonely. I'd rather be surrounded by fucking people that want more out of this life than people that don't give a fuck and like to live really fucking average. I am not satisfied with average. <clears throat> I never have been and I never will be. And I'm willing to sacrifice certain things in my life to become over exceeding average, to bring to bring people to the top with me. <clears throat> now, I'm not bashing on average people. I'm more so saying, if you bitch about your shitty job every day, <clears throat> or you bitch about being broke, or you bitch about not having time, or you bitch about pretty much anything that has to do with working, that is what I mean by average. I will not work an average job. I will pursue my dreams and bring people that have big dreams with me. That is what I mean. I don't want to go to a fucking job Monday through Friday or whatever the fuck. I've done that. I've worked 80 hours a week. I've worked seven days a week. I've done the hard. That shit fucking sucks. I don't give a fuck if you're bringing home $4,000. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to me. I'd rather bring home $100 a week and then blow the fuck up because I decided to take that step and create my own business. I'd rather be broke for a minute and wealthy forever than have a little bit of money for a minute and broke forever. Make sense? No, this actually makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm having a really hard time like tracking what she's saying and like the point she's trying to make. For most people that join Monate and any MLM in general, you're not even going to make a livable wage, okay? Let alone make enough to be categorized as wealthy or rich. If you join an MLM, there's a 99% chance that you're just going to stay broke. And to think otherwise is delusional. I don't really understand why she's trying to say that working a job that gives you a solid amount of steady money is somehow better than joining an MLM where making money is purely a possibility. It's not a guarantee. I'm just feeling really lost already. If you're living a great life, that is not what I'm talking. You're not, this isn't pointed to you. If you're content and happy and proud and fulfilled and all of the things, this is not directed at you. This is directed to the people that constantly comment on my things that are like, I don't like my job. I don't like that I can't travel. I don't like that I don't have money. I'm like, bitch, you literally are 29 years old, 40 years old, why are you broke? You wanna know why you're broke? Because you work for somebody. You wanna know why you're broke still working for somebody? Because they don't give a fuck about how many years you work with them. They don't care. No, 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 no. This is so backwards. The people that don't care are the higher ups of MLM companies. The CEOs, the people at the top of the pyramid, they don't know you, they don't care about you. They care so little about you that they don't even hire you as an employee. You get to pay them to be their salesperson. And you could quite literally work for years and years and not make a single dime and that is legal, that is okay. Because you're an independent contractor and your company owes you nothing. You are just a warm body to fill the spot. 
If you don't want to sell Monet anymore, that's fine. Step aside because there's a hundred other 20 somethings who also want to try and be an influencer and sell shampoo. And that's not to say that this also can't be true of like retail jobs or restaurant jobs or something of that nature. I have also worked those jobs. Those jobs are just rotating doors of lots of employees because lots of people possess the skills necessary to do those jobs well. But I would make the argument that in a professional setting, in a professional job, you are valued. Your skills and your training and your education education are valuable and you are paid based on skill and experience. For example, I have a master's in elementary education and I have my teaching license. I can go and work in a school today, but my husband AJ can't because he's not qualified. The same exact way that AJ, his job is to forecast the weather for rocket launches for the Space Force, okay? I can't do that job. I'm not qualified for that. These are all very nuanced professional jobs that not everybody off the street has the skill set for. So when an employer finds somebody who is qualified and can fill that role, that's extremely valuable. In that scenario, you are valued, you are cared for, you are compensated for your time and for the work that you do. But the same cannot be said about multi-level marketing companies. They don't care about you enough to give you a set pay. They don't care about you enough to give you benefits or paid time off or a health care plan. I'm sorry, it just really bothers me when they try and make a point that the workforce is so terrible for this reason, but they don't realize that that reason applies more appropriately to multi-level marketing. When I was in Arizona, I had raises every two weeks. Three weeks. Bitch, people... My point being... Work life, people don't give a fuck about you. And unless they, unless you work for a company that truly does, there's no point. Someone that understands that you need time and freedom and space and joy and traveling and family time. And I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to have babies and never see them because I'm working at a fucking shitty job. No, no. I get one life. Do you guys realize you get literally one life? You could die right the fuck now. Right now, you could pass away. Anyone in your life could die right now. And you've decided to work that job for fucking 12 hours a day. When you could have worked at home on your phone or on a laptop or... You know, doesn't that make... Like, I want to be around my kids when I have them. I want to be able to take care of my mom and not have to worry about calling my manager to take a day off when she's sick. This is all so manipulative. Not every person that works hates their job. Not every woman wants to be a stay-at-home mom. Not every job requires that you have to ask permission from a manager for time off for a family emergency. She's just regurgitating every overgeneralization that every other MLM rep will say. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks and hoping something resonates with someone out there. And the whole like, you only live one life and you could die tomorrow. Like who wants to spend their life selling shampoo and recruiting people people into a pyramid scheme, not I. You guys, I'm letting you know, if you're smart, taking 10 steps backward isn't really taking 10 steps backward. I never thought I would end up back here in Michigan, right the fuck here. But guess what? My mind is so determined to get to where I wanna be, starting a business from the ground up. Once again, I've done this multiple times now. This is the second, third, Third time I have started a business from the ground up. I am very aware of how this goes. You're going to be broke as fuck at first. That's okay. But do you think I'm not still hustling? Bitch, I work two, three jobs sometimes a day. And this. Don't play with me. I'm getting my money. But money is not happiness. Not to me. Satisfying other people and making everyone feel proud of themselves and getting money at the same time. Bringing people that you love and care about to the top with you. Bringing my fucking followers that have supported me through everything under the sun with me. You guys, you don't need to just work this job full time. A lot of people don't. But if you want to get far, you know what a lot of people also don't do? They also don't fucking work this job when they're trying to get money. You can't just get a job and not work a job. Working at a fucking building or corporate is easy as fuck. You get paid hourly or salary and that's it. You just show up and do the fucking job. Boo hoo. That's so hard. It's not. It's really fucking easy working corporate. You have no goals. You're just sitting there. 
doing the same fucking thing every day and it's boring as hell to me anyway. I can't fucking stand that. So what I'm hearing is that this might be her third attempt at an MLM, maybe the same MLM, we don't know. She just said that this is her third time like trying to start a business from the ground up, which we know that this is not a business from the ground up. I don't know if she had businesses that were legitimate prior to this that she was actually building, but she even admits, she's like, I've done this three times and I know how this goes and I don't make a lot of money in the beginning. And then it takes this weird turn of like, but that's okay that I don't make a lot of money because money is and everything and if I wanted money I would work a corporate job because that's so easy like what is her point <laughs> and just because you work in a corporate or a professional setting does not mean that your work is meaningless or that you don't have a passion for what you do I just can't stand that complete like over generalization and cliche that like the corporate world is bland and bleak and it sucks and you're a robot this is just really fascinating to watch that she's like if I wanted to make money I would just go do corporate but who wants to do corporate who wants to make money but with this job, it doesn't feel like a job. And you'll only understand when you join. It doesn't feel like a job. It feels like a breath of fucking fresh air. I have friends that give a fuck. Real ones that want to see me grow. They don't get jealous. That aren't envious. That aren't rude. That aren't fake. That believe in me. That support me. Fuck. This is taking a very dark turn. And honestly, maybe she would find success in acting because this is quite the performance. I know you can't see her facial expressions completely, but she is really milking this. Y'all really want your shitty fake fucking friends that don't even support you? Because I don't. I don't give a fuck. Your work friends are going to become your best friends. But this job does not feel like work to me. I have best friends. I'm creating a great life for my future. And I'm not busting my ass for someone to be like, Alyssa, guess what? You only made $20 an hour today. And you worked overtime, but I just took like $500 out of your paycheck. Even though you could be making six grand, you're making only four. Fuck you. Fuck you. I am not busting my ass for some shithole. Nurses, doctors, they don't even make that much. It's sad. They're saving fucking lives. $50 an hour is not shit. I hope you know that. It's not. Not when you're saving lives. Not when you're investigating. Not when you're becoming a medical assistant or any type of medical field or fuck building anything like just people engineers people that deserve more money you want to know who makes the most money out of all those fucking companies the manager the owner this is some unhinged behavior it appears like she's looking down on people who make twenty dollars an hour fifty dollars an hour when i can nearly guarantee you that she does not make that much Unless she falls within the top 0.14% of Mon8, she doesn't make more money than somebody who makes $20 an hour. I do agree that a lot of professions deserve to be paid more, okay? Teachers especially. But what level of delusion do you have to reach to think that making $20 an hour with a raise every couple weeks is something to look down upon? That's a decent paying job, and that's more than what 99.86% of people in Mon8 make. There's a fucking quote all these girls and my team keep saying. And it was like, for all the doors that closed on me, I'm coming back to buy the fucking building. And I hope to God every single person that has ever been in my life knows every fake fucking lying ass friend and lover, everyone that destroyed me, broke me, hurt me, threw me away, gave me nothing, you guys don't even know. I've literally slept on a piece of fucking plywood in a fucking stranger's house for seven months. You don't know what the fuck I've been through. This is way more than money to me. This is dreams. I will walk across that stage with my girls and my girlfriend and I will fucking scream joy and watch everyone that believes in me proud in that damn fucking stand. And I want you 
to be one of those people. I want the person watching this. I want the person that's like, fuck Alyssa, you really hit my heart. You guys, you don't need to do this full time. You just need to have passion and work ethic and grind and your efforts will be rewarded. Finally. Finally, you'll get rewarded for working your ass off. Finally, you'll get freedom. Finally, you can fucking make money while you're flying across the country. Finally, you can sit on the beach and make money. Finally, you can see your parents when they're sick. Finally, you can do the things without having to request the day off. Fuck you. And if you don't request it off, you're fired. And if you're a good worker, you want to know one thing one person said to me? You're an amazing worker, but you had one bad day and you... I'll never forget that fucking prick. When I worked for seven days a week for 14 hours a fucking day because I was so depressed, I asked to come in at 7.30 in the morning and stay until 12 o'clock at night. I managed the entire building. Bitch, I was making more money than the goddamn... Almost as much as the goddamn owner. And this stupid fuck looked at me and said, you had one bad day, Alyssa. You make the company look bad. Bitch, fuck you. I will never be degraded for outworking the fuck out of everyone that I'm surrounded with and then being talked down to because I didn't have a good day. Hell no. I will run this shit. And y'all can suck my fat fucking i will make you swallow it anyways we're talking sucking out here I, i'm trying to remain calm it's really testing me it is very apparent that she is deeply hurt on so many levels and for that i feel very very sorry for her clearly this anger this resentment that we're seeing it runs a lot deeper than monate it runs a lot deeper than being an mlm very unfortunate it's a bummer to see that and you know i always try my best to stay away from like personal assumptions personal judgments things like that but she's bringing up this anecdote about this time where her superior told her that her actions made the company look bad and just based on the way that she's behaving in this video and the way that she's speaking to the viewer, I believe it that she got in trouble in a traditional workplace. That would actually make a lot of sense that like maybe she lost her temper or some, some situation went down where she got in trouble with management and there were consequences and maybe that's the root of why she has so much deep-seated hatred towards like traditional jobs. I don't know if she's intending for this video to be like motivational or to help her recruit people, but it's coming across like she's just venting and she's airing all of her grievances and all of her hatred about her experience in the workforce and how she's now gonna prove everybody wrong. Which is really, really sad because we know statistically that that's probably not gonna happen. And I'm not saying that to hate on her goals or anything. That's just like a black and white standpoint. The odds are not in her favor with Monate's compensation plan. And then once we add in this like anger and this attitude towards the audience that she's hoping to recruit, the cards are kind of stacked against her, I'm afraid. But I'm just saying no your company looked bad ho i made it look good and then when i actually had a bad day it just showed how bad it was fuck you <laughs> i'm livid <laughs> i hate people and then the best thing about being an entrepreneur guess what if you have a bad day guess who it falls on you dummy Alyssa, damn, you didn't get a sale today. Damn, you didn't do this today. Well, guess what, Alyssa? Do a better job now. Start now. Do a better job tomorrow. I don't sit there and abuse myself with mean-ass words. Fuck you. People are ugly. I don't give a fuck. If you have an ugly personality, you're... I wish I could talk all day, because sometimes when I'm on these rants, I really couldn't be talking for hours. But if you have an ugly personality to me, you're hideous as fuck. There is, n I don't give a fuck how beautiful you are. I don't give a fuck. Your personality, if it ain't cute, bitch, you are just not cute. I don't do the mean bitch 
I don't like mean girls. <laughs> I think we might be lacking some self-awareness here. No. I don't like mean ass girls. I want sweethearts. I want sweet girls and sweet guys. I don't want jealous girls. Bitch, bye. Get the fuck out of my face with your jealous ass self. Cheer me on. Go to the top with me. Why is everyone so mad? If I wanted your man, I would take him. The fuck? Get out of my face. Stop being jealous. It ain't cute. I really truly feel amazing sometimes when I be going on these rants. But I'm just saying, I don't like a mean girl. I don't like someone that talks shit. I don't like someone that doesn't believe in you. I don't like it when people are like, you're gonna go nowhere in life. You're here. And I'm like, do you, bitch. <laughs> I just laugh at people that talk about me. And a lot of people talk shit about me. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of embarrassing for them. Cause I'm like, bitch, you have no idea what is cooking. <laughs> Y'all see the cars I post. Wait. I'm gonna get in them and be like, Aah! What up, ugly? Oh, you still working that same job? Yeah. And I'm gonna laugh and be like, hey, you remember when you were talking shit about me? <laughs> Guess what? You're still doing the same thing you were doing seven years ago. <laughs> You're a bitch. So there's that. I have like mental whiplash. I We went in so many directions, I cannot keep track. I think that my favorite thing about this entire 14 minute rant video is that the very last slide following the video is a little message box that's like, message me if you wanna join my team. Even if I did wanna join Monate, I am running in the opposite direction of this behavior. There is not a chance that I am watching this and thinking to myself, wow, she's a great role model. This is some upstanding behavior and she would be a great leader to me. I would love to have her as my upline. I'm just like so deeply embarrassed right now. I don't know what to say. I wish her all the best in her dreams and her endeavors. And that's all that I'm gonna say about that. The next clip that I'm gonna show you is pretty unique because the person in the clip is actually a real housewife of New Jersey. So she's a public figure, I'm not gonna blur her face. Her name is Jennifer Aiden and she's telling people to go to her friend's profile and buy products to support her Modare business. So for some backstory, cause I know that Modare is a little bit of a less common MLM. They sell health products, wellness products, beauty products, home products, just personal care products in general. Honestly, like every other MLM ever. So think skincare, hair care, supplements, stuff like that. I'm gonna show you the video and then there's a picture that goes along with it. Hey guys, so I just wanted to take a moment and let you guys know that my girlfriend Caroline is selling these amazing products for collagen and weight loss. I just placed my first order. I'm gonna put the link here and I'm gonna tag her. So if you guys have any questions uh, about it, just DM Caroline and she'll tell you all about it. I'm really, she's been raving about it, that she's been using it for weeks and she's already lost inches and she's telling me her skin looks fantastic. And it really does, it really does. So I just put in my first order and if you guys want to, I'm gonna add the link right here. And again, I'm gonna tag Caroline. So if you guys are interested, just DM her all your questions. So that woman is a real housewife of New Jersey. And then the person who sent me that clip also sent me a screenshot of Caroline's story. And it says, launching a new team in my direct sales business. No experience required, all done through your phone. Sky is the limit on what you can earn. Excellent work ethic required. Start your own business for under $150, including product. Join today and receive a free box of trim singles, which are ideal for travel. This is the link to join. Any questions, DM me and I'll walk you through it. So there's no question that Jennifer is like, hey, go to Caroline and support her MLM. The person that sent me these clips and these photos also told me that Caroline is set to be on next season of Real Housewives of New Jersey. And here's what really bothers me is when famous people, public figures, influencers, people with just a massive following in general, it's when they use that platform to start shilling MLM products. It's a cash grab and it's super manipulative. People with a massive social media following and a broad scope of influence are much more likely to be successful in an MLM than the average person. They're gonna get a lot 
lot more people to buy the products. They're going to get a lot more people to join the business opportunity. And just by virtue of doing that, they're going to rise in the ranks really quickly. I would argue that these people didn't follow this Caroline woman because they love Modere and they want to be pitched Modere all the time. They probably just like her because she's a public figure. She's an influencer. They like following her for that. But now that she is in Modere, she's able to exploit that audience and exploit her following by pitching them products and getting them to join her business. You are literally a real housewife, okay? You have a TV show on Bravo. Why are you joining an MLM? And the answer is to make a quick buck. That's it. It's not because she's in desperate need of money. It's not because she's suffering from some health issue and she thinks that Modere is going to help heal her. It's not because she's a busy mom who needs something flexible to work around her schedule. Caroline has like 150,000 followers. She's only joining Modere because she knows that in an instant, she could have thousands of people under her influence that would buy product from her or join her team. And she could make a lot of quick money doing that. I could also imagine that there is a unique dynamic when it comes to a like famous person or an influencer who joins an MLM where someone could be following Caroline and all of a sudden she joins Modere and it's like this opportunity opens up for them. Like, oh my gosh, I could be on Caroline's team. I could be connected to her. I could be in her downline. I could work with her. And that could potentially be very enticing to someone who likes Caroline as a person and they see this opportunity in front of them and they take that opportunity and they sign up for Modere, even though they don't really care about Modere, but they just wanna get closer to Caroline in some weird way. It comes across as like a desperate influencer cash grab where like I said, she's exploiting her following and it feels really icky to me. Okay, the next thing I have to show you is an Arbon rep and she's showing us a recipe that she just made up for like a cold brew coffee shake. Hey you guys, so I am just now getting around to making my morning shake, which it's 11 o'clock. That is typical of my life. But I wanted to get on here and share with you guys how I was making it because it is a fun fall recipe. I've actually never had this recipe, but I've used some of the things. So anyways, my favorite thing to use this time of year is the pumpkin spice latte cold brew almond milk. So good. I used this last year. I haven't used it this year yet. So anyways, I'm going to do eight ounces. And then what I'm really excited about, which I have to say, this is not in stock. I'm so sorry, but this is our pumpkin spice protein. Uh, oh. <laughs> everybody's about to freak out. So I'm going to do two scoops of the pumpkin spice protein. Um, Everly, hold on. Okay. So like I said, our protein is 20 grams of vegan protein. And again, I'm doing a pumpkin spice which is not in stock. I've got to say that again before I get a lot of messages. Um, and then I'm going to do our fiber boost, just about a fourth of a scoop. This helps to absorb toxins, helps keep you full longer. Hold on, Bubba. He wants some too. And then I'm going to put in our multivitamin mineral boost. Definitely super, super important. And I love that it's powder form because I do not like pills. Uh, so this is for me perfect and I love to get all this done like in one drink I will tell you when you can help and then I'm going to add in some spinach which might sound so weird and gross but you're not gonna be able to taste it so why not right all right you guys finished product let's see if it tastes just like pumpkin spice or like pumpkin spice spinach or in Everly's word salad mm, exactly why I love our protein you would never know you're never gonna know your kids are never gonna know that you put spinach in this because now I'm about to work up for Everly and I will record her response okay Evers try it out What do you think? Does it taste like pumpkin spice? She has few words because she's mad at me because I didn't let her help. Do you like it? Huh? <laughs> Are you mad at me? I'm sorry. You like that? Well, Bubba's obsessed. Um, okay, so I always feel like I'm walking on eggshells when 
I comment on parenting because I never want to mom shame, but why are we giving our toddler and our infant cold brew coffee mixed with three different supplements? I am in no way a healthcare professional, a nutritionist, a pediatrician, none of that obviously, but just according to my very quick, very surface level research about the certain vitamins and minerals and the daily values that children of this age should be getting. The drink that she made has easily like two to three, if not four times the daily value for her kids. And she mixed it with caffeine and just like, ugh, like I'm just, it's kind of concerning to me, honestly. And I know that she just gave them little sips, but I want to point out that it's concerning for others who may be watching this from the outside. Who knows? Maybe she contacted her pediatrician. They gave her the green light to give her kids this stuff in small doses and it's cool. But what it's doing is it's sending the message that concocting and serving these Arbon supplements to your children is a safe thing to do when that might not be the case. And it's also crossing that boundary of using your children to sell your MLM product, which I also highly disagree with. I'm of the belief that exploiting your children and making them try your drink on camera so that all of mommy's Instagram followers can see how great Arbon is and so that mommy can hopefully sell some, like that's very messed up. And I say this all the time, but you know, showing your kids on Instagram or sharing with other moms the things that are working for your kids or the things that your kids like, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But when you are serving your child something on camera that even the Arbonne website says to keep out of reach of children in an attempt to hopefully sell that product, I do have an issue with that. The next thing we're gonna look at is a reel and this one says, I don't support MLMs. And then it says closed captioning, I don't watch TV. And then it says, no one cares. You don't get an award because you watch less TV. It's another example of MLM Huns pretending not to care about the anti-MLM movement and I love it. I've seen a lot of these reels lately addressing the anti-MLM community or addressing the misconceptions of network marketing and things like that, which I always find so entertaining because they spend so much time and energy creating these things just to tell people how much they don't care about the anti-MLM community. When obviously they care, they have to care. Their businesses and their companies are being threatened. And I don't say that with pride in the sense that I want them to fail or that I want their businesses to go under, but I do say that with pride in the sense that the word is spreading and that people are educating themselves and that less and less people will be sucked into these schemes in the future. So the sassy reel of like, I don't support MLMs. And she's like, congrats, no one cares. It's like, okay, but you actually do or else you would not have taken the time to create this reel. And I do not find enjoyment seeing people in MLMs who are struggling. That's not something to be happy about. I would never wish that upon anybody. But I do find enjoyment when I see these types of reels popping up because it's confirmation that the anti-MLM community is growing stronger. I find great satisfaction in seeing this kind of evidence that there are people out there who are willing to stand up and say, you know what, I actually don't support this business model and here's why. I think that's incredibly powerful and I love to see that more and more. And with that, that is all of the clips that I have for you for this MLM Top Fails video. I am just in awe of what kinds of things that you will come across on the internet. So I've said it a million times before, but I'll say it again. Thank you for sending me this stuff. And before we go, I have a comment shout out. This one says, came for the tea, stayed for the cats. And of course, I love that so much. My cats have been featured in a few of my videos. It's really sweet to see all the love and support for them. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.